What's up beauties? Welcome to this video. Today, we will be dissecting my track Alive, Green Tree and my really good friend Lily. The reason why we're taking a look at this project file today is because the song just hit 100k on SoundCloud, which is pretty fire for streams, and then it's doing well on Spotify too. So since it's a, it's a popular track, I thought it'd be a good idea to look into what went into making this project. So, we're in the project file right now. If you notice, it's like 137 different tracks. I tried layering a bunch of sounds, give it more of a authentic, genuine feel, um, which is the reason why we have so many layers. And then we're gonna go through each layer and see how they interact with each other. So I think naturally the first step to start at is the intro. <laughs> So what you're hearing there is vocals, layered with vocals chops on top of a pluck. First thing we're gonna look at is that pluck sound. All this is, is a little patch I made in Serum. It's two square waves with a really short attack and short decay, and it's playing the main melody of the song that you hear in the drop. Um, but it's a lot softer than the drop synths, and it's only one layer. On top of that pluck, I have OTT for post processing, an auto filter to make it rise, a stereo expander. I did some EQing, trying to get all the bad frequencies out, and then another auto, auto filter and EQ. On top of that pluck, we have the vocals. First, we start off with this guy. And those are just some vocals that Lily sang and I chopped them up, added some post-processing, actually a lot. So that's why I have all these Johns on. I'm gonna turn off the post-processing really quick and let you guys hear what it sounds like without it. That's without and this is with. Cool. And on top of those vocals, we have some more chops. Um, and for these guys, I just had Lily hum to like an instrumental version of the song. Sweet. On top of that, we also have some like, like just some vocal throws and these go throughout the rest of the intro. Um, and that's just giving, when Lily sings something, it just gives it a stereo field. So now that we're done with the intro, let's take a look at the chorus. The basics for the chorus um, revolve around the drum pattern. Let's start with the kick. And then on top of our kick, we have some claps. And then on top of that, we have everything else. That's what EE is. And I think that's just some hi-hats and some shakers. The first clap we have is this little pattern. This little apple clap I got from the Spisquick sample pack. Love it. We have some OTT and reverb on there. Then we have another clap. This is playing almost the same rhythm with one little guy in here, but the interesting thing about this clap pattern is that I'm pitching it up at different intervals. And then we have another hat. A bamboo sound and then a wood sound. Yeah, and then on top of that we have our main vocals. Again, using the same processing I was beforehand, we still have those vocal guys layered on. And on top of that, we have it layered with the actual vocals. One other element that I added here that I think is really cool is these vocal chops that are playing in the background. What I did to make those chops was I took a sample from Lily singing. Let's unfreeze this so we can take a look at it. So what we're taking actually is this little note from Lily's voice. What is this chopped up from? I'm curious.
So that's just where you say, tell me, baby. Um, and I put it in key. Pitched it up, added some reverb, OTT, compression, saturation, EQ, chorus, delay, EQ. Um, basically to give it like a super spacey, cool sound, throw in the background. And along with that guy, we also have another vocal chop that I took from the acapella and chopped up and put in key. And that sounds like this. Okay, now we get to the interesting part, the build. If you notice here, I switched up the sound completely. I wanted to throw a real instrument in there. Um, I recently got Contact's Session Horns Library, which is a library full of awesome horns and stuff. And I think I used a saxophone and a trumpet in there. Maybe I used a wider variety, I'm not sure. But this is the horn section. So first horn we have is this guy. That sounds like a tuba with a lot of reverb. Um, that's giving it, if you look at the EQ here, you can see what I was trying to do. Okay, that makes no sense. I guess I was trying to get the middle frequencies for that guy. And then this guy layered on top is a little trumpet with a lot of reverb and OTT as well. And then on top of that, ooh. I'm guessing I made those sounds in Serum and recorded them in. Very cool. If you notice here in my automation, I'm doing little reverb throws after every note, just so that when the note hits, I'm not using reverb as a way to make the sound quieter. I'm still keeping that sound's intensity while the tail is being amplified via these um, reverb throws. On top of those horns, we have a new instrument as well. It's this little re-space that I use in all my songs. Playing a pretty simple melody, but it sounds super warm and fuzzy, and I love throwing this in all my sounds. This is a patch I made myself as well in Serum. In regards to percussion during the buildup, I kept it very simple. All I have going on is a snare. On top of that, once it gets to the second half of the measure, we introduce a kick as well. Build up the intensity. We have some basic FX for the drop as well. Very cool stuff. Okay, now we're done with the build up. Let's get into the drop. The drop has a lot more synth layers to it. Um, let's just listen to drop by itself. Very cool, there's a lot going on there. Let's take a look at it. Again, we're gonna start with the synths. We have our first element is flux. Those sound cool and they add a little high frequency range to the bounce part. We also have little pluck sound it's similar to that original pluck that we heard in the intro but it's a lot more grittier um i threw on some saturation that's what the fab filter is doing there i have two of them actually some erosion to give it some white noise and then an eq so that's that's like our mid foundation for the drop synth so underneath that guy is this deep house bass i found And all my synths are being made in Serum. I usually try to make my own sound. I think this sound, however, so I, re I make everything in Serum, lay down the MIDI, and then I take that audio, um, resample it so that I can have the audio files right here. That saves me CPU and allows me to manipulate things I wouldn't otherwise be able to manipulate via Serum. We have something that looks like it's panned right or left. I can't tell which bottom or front is. Let's check. So right, we have this guy. And then on the left side, we have this guy. We have a bass underneath. That's our 808. I made that in Serum as well. Getting sidechain to the kick. We also have this like 
really warm fuzzy sound um, that really brings up those mid-range frequencies. Throughout the drop, something I like to incorporate is adding white noise because with your vocals and your synths, you tend not to fill up those frequency ranges. If you throw in white noise, it makes the sound louder and full. So I have some white noise being side chained on my left side and some white noise on my being side chained on the right side to give it a full effect. So let's listen to the left one. Pretty cool stuff. And then that basically does it for all the synths and during the drop. And now let's layer them and see what they all sound like. Underneath that we have four to floor kick pattern. Pretty punchy kick, so I layered I layered this somatics kick on top of a another sample kick I found, threw some OTT on that, only kept the highs. So that's what gives it that punch. Without the second kick, this is what it would sound like, which is fine. That's a beautiful kick, but we can make it sound even better with this guy. Uh, uh. Throw some claps on there. So I wanted to do a clap with some sort of tonal response because I think normal claps can get boring sometimes. And I was going for like a reggaeton, like, and that usually doesn't have like a normal clap. It has some sort of like clap with some sort of tonal frequency. So we got this claps from a somatic sample pack pitched in the key of E. So I didn't need to change. Oh, I needed to bump it up a semitone. So this is in the key of F. And you can see with my tuner, I'm getting F and that's the scale I'm playing in. And then we get the rest with everything else, all the other percussion, we get this nice sort of like tropical vibe. Shouts out to this wood sound, bro. Listen to it. Groovy. And then we have hi-hat patterns going back and forth every measure. which is a sort of call and response that makes the song more interesting. Let's hear all the percussion together. On top of our synths, drop synths. Okay, so that basically does it for the song. Hope you guys like the song. Please bump it, stream it, helps me a lot, helps Lily. Big shouts out to Lily for coming through, laying down some incredible vocals. Also, Coleman's gonna drop a video for a live. We worked on it for his final film project, but he's right now he's like re-editing it, I don't know. So get hyped for that. I don't know when I'll drop that, but when I do, I'll notify via social media. And then also I'm dropping a remix of Flume's Rushing Back very soon. I may have dropped it now, and if I have, I'll play it for you, send you some links to it. Yeah, but for 2020, we have a lot more singles coming out, a lot more remixes, concerts. I'm super excited. I hope everyone is having a great new year and I hope everyone's new year is off to a great start. I love you beauties, thank you for watching. Pump out some YouTube content, Jake Paul, suck my dick, I'm coming for you. 2020 baby, disco line, bump the song, yeah, whatever, peace. Baby,